The fact that you feel sorry for people does not mean that you're good. Now, it might be one element of what could make you good if you were good, but that reflex, reflex isn't okay, let, good. Let's, let's say that again. The fact that you feel sorry for people does not mean you're good, is not a sign that you're good. So feeling mm -hmm. sorry for people, we might think that that's empathy. Hmm. Well, it is in the, it is in the, in the most primordial sense. It's what makes you go ah when you see a kitten, you know, and, and fair enough, but <laughs> going ah when you see a kitten on a plate, that's neither a sign of your aesthetic sophistication nor your moral virtue. Mm -hmm. And so because moral, moral virtue is a multifaceted phenomenon, and this is also in some sense what the politicians have forgotten, it's like, follow the science. Well, what data? And Selected by who? And which scientists? And, yeah, good luck. No kidding. Good luck. It's such a lie. It's a, a philosophically shallow lie. Too, but it sounds great. And we've been conditioned to believe that that's where truth and goodness reside. Science has become a synonym for, for moral purity and perfection. Yeah. Things. Well, it's also the case that it, it allows the politicians to abdicate responsibility in the face of a crisis. It's like, well, we're deferring to the experts. It's like, no, no. There's no deferring to the experts if you're a politician. There's consultation with a diverse range of experts. That's that's a whole different thing. Yeah. It's like, well, we're, we're deferring to the physicians. What about the economists? You forgot about them? What about, and that's your- What about the physicians who disagree with each other? Well, but the yes, economists they certainly disagree do. with each other. Yeah, well, and the economists always disagree with the biologists too, because the biologists are always generally blunt, you know, vaguely speaking. Most of the Malthusian environmentalist types are biologically minded. You know, oh my God, the sky is falling. Well, the economists say, no, we can we can innovate our way around this like we have in the past. Mm -hmm. And we don't have any obvious limit to resources. And there's a real argument to be had there. What are the limits to economic growth and prosperity? Are there any? Where are they located? Well, this is a real argument, but the idea that you can defer to the biological catastrophists is an abdication of political responsibility. And self-destructive, most likely. Well, well, you, everybody can watch for themselves. Just watch what happens to energy prices in, the, in Europe. Just watch. And just watch what happens to poor people, because it's coming, and fast. I think one in ten people in the UK have already received at least one disconnection notice from their utilities. One in ten. So, you know, and in Canada, the same reflexively compassionate popinjays are going to war on the, so the fundamental years, basis of the Western economy, you know, the oil and gas industry. Are we going to see greater disparity between the upper and lower classes, higher levels of homelessness, higher levels We're of... We're certainly going to see greater... All the, all the COVID policy has driven immense amounts of capital to a small proportion of people. I mean, everyone knows this. How many houses were had so much cardboard they could hardly even figure out where to store it because of Amazon purchases? Now, Amazon sells everything. And, you know, in some sense, hats off to Jeff Bezos because look at the supply chain that he managed to keep going under dire conditions during the pandemic. But on the other hand, every cent he made, in some sense, was taken from small business people. And we've decimated the small business community. And to think of that as somehow less dangerous than the pandemic is utterly foolish. I, I think I think the move that was made this week to scuttle the GoFundMe funding for the truckers is more dangerous to our collective health than the pandemic. Just that one move. Why is we'll that? See. Can you explain that a little bit? Why is that so dangerous to our health? collective health because the government just colluded with a, a, a corporation to steal money from citizens who are expressing their quickly political rights. and efficiently no problem yeah. no discussion yeah. no public yeah and with a moral overlay well we're going to give it to approved charities they didn't even say they would refund the money now you can ask for your money to be refunded that's real nice eh? so someone mugs you says well if you ask me i'll give you it i'll give it back to you so how about you don't steal it to begin with, or if you do, then you just return it.